compressor. Okay. Well, let me get over here and take a look at it. Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned, you know, because, you know, with so much water, the water might get inside it and corrode something or... Yeah. Maybe mess up a circuit board or something or a, or a breaker. Well, let's take a look and we'll see what's going on. How often do you change the filter? Every six months. Okay. In fact, it's due to be changed. Well, I changed it in March. April, May, June, July. Yeah, it's probably due to Do you want to change it for me? Yeah, if you have one. That's not good. Address that. Yeah, that's gonna get fixed. So it's mostly that's just a plug-in connector. Where to go? Oh, down that here. That contactor right there. Oh. I had that happen before, and uh, yeah, this one's burnt up too. Which one's that? That's a yellow one. The black one. Oh, that's hard to see. See it? Yep. It's fried too. I've had this happen one other time and they gave me a whole new heater kit to put in because I think there was some kind of recall or something on these. I'll have to call Goodman and talk to him. Good. Is this dangerous right now? Well, I got the, the wire. those breakers Maybe turned we off. we should, at the you know, put some tape on it or something. Yeah. I'll, keep it from shorting out. I'll, uh, oh, this is not good. I was afraid of this. So the model and serial number and stuff's all right here. So, um... <clears throat> But I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at all this and check your drain out and everything. And uh, I'll give them a call and see what they wanna do about that. Because see, this is, that, that would be the factory's problem. Because when we install this, we don't have to touch any of that. The only wires that right. we touch in here is the wires going into the breaker right. and the low voltage wiring. See if this drain stopped up. What's going on here? I don't know exactly. What we got? Cracked drain pan, man. Here, who knows? water down it again and see what happens. I'm not, not really sure what all you can actually see because it's so dark in here. But I suck the drain line out, pour a little bit more water in it and see what happens. I don't like that. 
trap at all. All right, well, got that taken care of. I'll have to go pick that heater kit up. But the, uh, the drain was stopped up. I'm getting water out of it now. And the, you guys probably can't see that on the camera. It is draining steadily. So we got that problem taken care of. All right, we're back. I got the new heat kit. I'm gonna check and make sure we don't have any power. I already flipped the breakers off. Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing, nothing, okay. We're good there. Let's see how this is. So I am going to have to unwire the low voltage. Where am I? Yeah. Actually. Hmm. No, I don't. It should be fine. This is a 50 amp breaker one. Put a piece of tape around both of them. So that now. That's the one going to the 50. <clears throat> There's a 50 and a 60 in the panel. And we have a 60 and a 50 here. So we want to make sure we put them back the same way. Orange is the 50. Before we go too much farther, let's see what the new one looks like. did improve the design. That's way better than the other one. Good old aluminum wire. I love it. Oh. 
Okay. First thing is this needs to come out. that out and we got one two three four more So I'll have to take that back and warranty it. small screws. Is that gonna yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> Much better design there. Taken care of this plug should just go right back together. Everything's tight. <laughs> He's coming there on ground logs. Everything looks in order. Yep. Kicks on it, it comes on like a bang, it's like an explosion. 
was really loud. And uh, I was wondering if that could long term be a problem or. He said there was something that he could put on there that would make it so start softer. We could look at a. I can, uh, whenever I go to turn on, I can take the amp draw and see if it's pulling like a lot of amps. And if we have to, we could put a hard start kit on it um, that will help it when it starts up. I think that's what he said. Uh, now, it's really loud. It makes you jump out of your skin if you're standing by it. Yeah, we can. Uh, I'll take the amp draw whenever I start it up and see if, if it's pulling a lot of amps and we can look into that. Can that be, uh, can that damage it long term? Uh, if it's on for a long time, yeah, it can, it can. It can make it fail prematurely. Yeah, well the last one did fail. Yeah, so it might be something it needs. But we can, uh, we can take a look at that whenever we go to start it up. They did improve the design of these, so that should help. Yep. Yeah, if it needs a if it uh, needs a hard start kit, I I have those on the truck, so. If it's something that it needs, we can we can definitely take care of take care of it. A hard start kit, uh, I'd have to look. I got a road on them. I, I don't. I'm not sure it right off the top. Yeah, as I recall. I never had such a hard time with a breaker. Difficult to clip on there. Should just. You want us to set the control unit on any certain setting before you start working on it? Um, it'll have to be on cooling whenever I go to check it out. Okay, so yeah. I'm not sure what temperature it's at. Okay, well, it's gonna take me just a second to get this wired back up right. and put together. So. All righty. are both 60s so this will be the 50 that'll be the 60 go ahead and get this back in there pain than I thought. So one thing we're going to do that wasn't done on the last one So we're going to add this onto the wires because it should have it being aluminum wire. antioxidant compound It'll help it from getting too hot too <laughs> I 
Okay. <clears throat> Can't really see down there very well. You guys aren't going to be able to see anything. Let me get this wire up. All right, so we got that is wired up. I think that's, I think that's it. Now I can put everything back together and um, test everything out. One thing you want to do is make sure you put the new schematic where you can see it, because it's completely different than the old one. All right. Out here now to service the air conditioner and the heat pump. So we'll get down here and take a look at everything. Size capacitor, we got 45 by 5. So, first off, a common is on there a little loose. I'll fix that. Take that off. Take that off. So, on the fan, we have. 4.8, which is fine, and 44 and 45, we're good. Let's check the contactor. Run it out. Pull off this one. We're gonna make sure we don't let right these touch any metal. I'll put that one there. Stick that one right there. And we have. Eighteen ohms on the contactor. Contactor's still good. There's a back one there. Oh, that's good.
everything there checked out good. I'm just gonna spray it off real quick. It's not really dirty. I'm just gonna spray it off real quick though and then we'll check everything out. All right, he's turning it on. We're gonna see what this loud noise is. And check the refrigerant pressures. how it does I really don't see a need to put the high side on at this moment unless something looks a little wacky. Hmm. Over the limit. It pulled more than my meter could read. I'm pulling 10 amps right now. Unload amps is 19, so that's not bad. Hopefully that pressure comes up. Did it scare you? It did. I jumped a little bit. <laughs> it's loud, isn't it? Um. So I did uh, in rush amps, which captures what it pulls right when it starts on, comes on, and it's so high that my meter couldn't even read it. So a, a hard start kit would be good. I just don't. I'd have to figure out how I could put it in here because they don't give you a lot of room. It goes in my electrical compartment. Well, it has to, yeah. That's the only way for it to be low. It shouldn't ever lose its refrigerant. Came up. It could have just been uh, that coil being wet, just had to dry off a little bit. 
but uh they look great so okay, we don't have to worry about that um i could just pull a disconnect get my probes off of here timed out you know they they grow for a hundred years and die for a hundred years <laughs> yeah that yeah, sounds about right. It was immense. That thing was huge. You can see the stump up in the back. Of it. That took a week to take that tree down. Yeah, I bet that wasn't fun for the guys doing it. It was really fascinating to watch him though. You know, the guy that climbed up there. Yeah, watching him climb up there is he pretty was cool. He using uh, uh, mountaineer gear. And you know, he was repelling up and down. and. And um, had, he only used one small chainsaw. And the limbs on, on that tree are, were, some of them were bigger than any tree that you see up here on, on the hillside. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was immense. And they, they only used a rope and tension on the rope to lower those limbs down. It was unbelievable. They cut the whole limb off. And had it tied off in a way that it, when it, when it swung down, it was it just swung swung like a pendulum. And the guy just when it came in to a certain place, he just released the tension on the rope. Have you ever watched him do that? I've watched him a couple of times. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And That's look. actually um, the method I used. We had to get down a really steep hill with a unit one time. So, I, and there was a tree at the top of the hill. So I took a rope and wrapped it around the tree and we put it on the dolly we had a couple guys on the dolly and i just let off a little bit at a time as they as they went down the hill guys they, they only used one rope and this guy yeah he would tie it off on one limb with a certain loop in it so that the guy that's standing down on the ground just keeps tension on it and it won't go in but as soon as he lets it go and lets the tension off one man can can use that yep. rope. Yep. Yes. Yeah, the guy told me he bought that rope just for this job. He said the tensile strength on that rope was thirty six thousand pounds. Wow. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's a <laughs> like eight cars, right? <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> thirty six thousand pound tensile strength. Okay, so we got. It. Run winding is connected to the T2 of the contactor as well as the common side of the run capacitor, which is usually marked to see. The I'll leave you alone. Can, oh, you're fine. I've got, uh, uh, I've got, I'm going to, I'm going to go do some pressure washing out here. And so I'm, you'll be able to see where I'm at. Alrighty. Let's see the run winding. We just repaved our street part of it, and I need to clean this mud off of it. <laughs> So this goes to T1, which I would think will be this side. Let's see here. Yep, T1 is that side. Okay, so that should be. That should be right. As far as that tells me, I'll go ahead and put this back on there. Get it on that wire. I'll go ahead and zip tie these back out of my way before I put the disconnect back in. I thought I was recording when I was installing this to begin with, and I wasn't. Get all that out of the way. Cut that off.
109, so we're good. Awesome. Yeah, that did make a difference. pressures came up to where they need to be we got the hard start installed so that's not pulling so many amps and start up we replaced the heater kit under warranty and I take that old one back to the warehouse and we got the drain unstopped so that's why uh maintenance is important all these problems found just to just for a maintenance call and we really didn't have any problems that you knew i was actually knew this was loud when it started so but we're going to take care of so we're good to go 